In today's video, we're going to be picking every single week three college football game just like we do every single week. Welcome back to the channel if you've already been here. And if you're here for the first time, welcome in. This is something we do every single week. We go through, we pick every single college football game using this beautiful website, Playoff Predictors. As you can see, they're all laid out. Uh, don't pay attention to the records on the left side here. Those are not accurate. Obviously, everyone's listed at zero and zero. So if you're paying attention to those and you're like, why do they say that? That's just why they say that. It's kind of a pain to update um, the schedule because the website doesn't do it right now in terms of what games they've won and lost. But I'll sort of recap what each team's record is. And as usual, let's just dive right into it, starting with a couple of Thursday games. Now, I'm going to get this video up kind of in the afternoon on Thursday. So some of these games might have already finished, but it, this game video will still be at least published before then. Uh, I think South Alabama is getting a home win over Northwestern State to set the tone here. But you've got an interesting one. Arizona State at Texas State. My Sun Devils on the road. A really tough matchup in San Marcos against a team with a head coach I really respect in G.J. Kinney. I've talked to him before. He follows me on Twitter. So a huge shout-out to him and the Bobcats. They're really cooking this year. But Arizona State has looked really good through a couple of games. And I think they've got a really underrated staff. I like how Sam Levitt is playing and throwing the ball. I think they're going to get just find a way to win this game and be just a little bit more physical than Texas State, maybe neutralize some of those playmakers they have. And they have a lot on offense. Joey Hobart, uh, they've got Jordan McLeod, obviously, at quarterback. They've got Ismail Mahdi at running back, whose name I mispronounce sometimes, which is why I had to pause for a second to think about that. But uh, then we've got a couple of Friday games. We've got UNLV at Kansas, which is a really intriguing one. UNLV, obviously, getting the road victory versus Houston already this season. They now travel to Lawrence to play Kansas, a team coming off of a loss. My concern with Kansas is in the post-Andy Kotelnicki uh, era, are they going to be able to get that offense back together? They have Jeff Grimes as their offensive coordinator, and the offense looked concerningly not good against Illinois, and that's something you can't say or couldn't say about Kansas over the last couple of seasons. UNLV is really good, and uh, Barry Odom's squad plays super well in big games. I'm still going to rock with Kansas. I just think that Lance Leipold is a good coach, and I think he's going to get these guys to bounce back, and I think that defensively they can do things that Houston cannot, and that'll be the difference there. Uh, we've got Arizona at Kansas State, which is the like premier Friday night game that they're kind of trying to do, the Big 12, um, a big uh, proponent of that. So you've got Arizona at Kansas State, one of only a couple top 25 battles. Both teams have shown weaknesses and shown flaws. Arizona, that defensive front, really, really has struggled, and defense overall has struggled against some inferior opponents. And for Kansas State, uh, it was just a close game at Tulane. But I, I was less concerned about the way Kansas State looked against Tulane. I think Avery Johnson's electric. I think they're going to have a lot of success against that Arizona team. Arizona might score a lot too, though. T-Mac is obviously electric. Fafita's a beast. They've got a great offensive coordinator in Dino Babers, which not a lot of people know. That's where Dino Babers is now. Uh, so I think Arizona can absolutely cook on offense, and I think this one will probably end up being a little bit more high scoring than some people think, but I think Kansas State is more capable of taking the game over and kind of dictating the pace and how this game goes, and, and they have some pretty good defenders as well on Kansas State. They did a great job in that second half of shutting down Tulane last week. Uh, we've got Memphis at Florida State. This is a game that looks like a lot more possible of an upset than it did a couple weeks ago to the point where if Memphis wins this game do you even call it an upset you've got an 0-2 Florida State team that's just been bullied although Florida State is coming off of a bye Mike Norvell I do think is a good coach even though they've looked so horrible over the last two weeks part of me just says surely surely they don't start 0-3 surely this is where Florida State shows some signs of life and actually does something and I'm just going to hope. It's basically hope that I'm saying I hope Florida State does and does that because we're going to have some uncomfortable conversations around Mike Norvell if, if they come out flat again uh, and start the season 0-3. I don't think he's necessarily on the hot seat or anything or anything like that, but I definitely think there's some uncomfortable conversations to be had. Cincinnati at Miami of Ohio. I think one of the games flying a little bit under the radar. Fun rivalry. Can Miami of Ohio get the win? I think I did end up picking Cincinnati in some of my picks that I posted on Twitter and TikTok and stuff, but I'm going to rock with Miami of Ohio. I feel like in these games, I don't give enough a benefit of the doubt to the group of five teams, and they've actually been succeeding in a lot of these such games. So give me Miami, Ohio at home. I do really like Cincinnati, and I do really like Coach Scott Satterfield. I talked to him at Big 12 Media Days. Really nice guy. He thinks Cincinnati's in the South, so take that as you will. And I think they have a bunch of talented players that can play football and play it well, and they just choked against Pitt last week, but 
Miami of Ohio beat them last season, just played a close game versus Northwestern, which was on the road, and they're at home for this game. So I think I'm going to rock with Miami of Ohio. I think Chuck Martin's squad will find a way to win. Uh, NC State, going to be a total bounce-back game at home against Louisiana Tech. Sonny Cumbie, if he's looking for wins to save his season, they're going to have to come in conference play in the CUSA, and that's how it's going to have to happen. Uh, they're just not going to beat NC State, especially an NC State team that just got whooped. They're going to be wired and ready to come back. LSU at South Carolina. This is college game day, which was a surprise to me. It's probably a surprise to some other people. I have a theory that they were dodging Corvallis intentionally because they don't want to shine the light on Corvallis because then the main story would be how they got spurned by ESPN. Uh, and so ESPN has pretty intentionally dodged Corvallis and dodged the Civil War a couple times now. Um, and I think it was last season they dodged the Washington State-Oregon State game when it was a pretty obvious choice, a top 25 battle. But that's just my tinfoil hat conspiracy that I have. But LSU at South Carolina, definitely an interesting one. South Carolina has really been impressive on the defensive front, and Lenore Sellers has been pretty electric. They end up bullying Kentucky last week. But LSU is a team that I think is really good, and I think USC was also really good. And in that week one game, somebody had to win. It just happened to be USC. People are down on LSU a little right now. I think we're going to see the gumbo gunslinger, which is Garrett Nussmeyer, come out and cook South Carolina. I love Beamer Ball, though, and I love the Cox to uh, make a bowl game this season. However, LSU, I think, is just going to be too much for them this game. And I think their offensive line at LSU is going to really do a good job of neutralizing those pass rushers that have been so successful for South Carolina. You want to talk about a game where a billion points will be scored? Look no further than North Texas, Texas Tech. Defense has just been completely optional for the Red Raiders this season. And you saw that against Washington State. You saw that against Abilene Christian. I like them at home, but I do not like the vibes of this game. They nearly lost Abilene Christian at home. Now in comes North Texas. Last season, it was their safe haven in Lubbock. They didn't lose in Lubbock. And so the fact that they've already nearly been beaten in Lubbock, the fact that they got dismantled so thoroughly against Washington State, the vibes are kind of down in Lubbock right now. And it's a team back-to-back -back seasons I was kind of high on, and it just seems like they got the wrong guys in the portal, and they're not gelling well, and things aren't going as well as you hoped they would go. Uh, so I'm concerned for Texas Tech. We've got Central Michigan at Illinois. Illinois, the home team, coming off a big win over, over Kansas. I think maybe they off to a slow start, but this is a Central Michigan team that just lost to FIU last week, so I do not have a ton of faith in them uh, and Jim McElwain's squad. I like Illinois at home. Arkansas State at Michigan. I'm going to take Michigan, but also that's you know, kind of a boring pick to make um, just say picking Michigan because obviously Michigan will win, but I'm taking Michigan minus 22 and a half as well. People are really low on that offense, and I think the offense just got made look, to look silly against Texas, a Texas team that has an elite defense and is so physical up front. They can make guys look kind of silly. Fresno State also subdued that Michigan offense a little bit, but Michigan ended up winning that game by 20, and I think Michigan is well, well, or Fresno State is significantly more points better than Arkansas State, so I think Michigan's going to be able to extend that lead and, and beat an Arkansas State team. That Shout out to Butch Jones. He's getting the wins. He's been able to do it. He Last season, they made a bowl game. This season, I think they're in a good spot to do so. They're 2-0 and already with a couple of close wins last week. I believe their win was over Tulsa, uh, but they're going to fall in the big house here. We've got Alabama, Wisconsin. Can Kalen DeBoer replicate the road success that Alabama had under Nick Saban? The answer to that question is no. What Nick Saban did on the road was unbelievable, but can they be good on the road, like comparably good on the road? That is my question, and how will they look on the road? Because that's one of the things to me that separates good programs from great programs is programs that are able to translate to on the road. And Wisconsin's a team I was pretty high on in the offseason, but after the alarming things we've seen, especially offensively against Western Michigan and then South Dakota last week, I'm definitely rocking with Alabama, but don't be surprised if Wisconsin's able to make this one a little closer than maybe it should be. I'm talking like a 27-20 Alabama victory. Oklahoma State at Tulsa could be considered a little sketchy. It's kind of funny that Tulsa keeps luring these teams uh, to their own stadium, but Oklahoma State shouldn't really have any issues. There's a pretty big skill and talent gap in this game. Boston College travels to play Missouri. It's another top 25 battle, but I really just don't think Boston College is deserving of that ranking at all. Their signature win is a lifeless Florida State team that I think could have lost to a ham sandwich that week if they had to take the field against them. And Missouri is a team that I actually think is a top 10 team and a perennial playoff contender. Take Missouri, take Missouri minus 16 and a half, take Missouri minus 19 and a half if that's what you're seeing. Um, they're going to go out there and they're going to cook. I, I just do not see Boston College matching up physically with these guys. Like they are going to get absolutely massacred. Their offensive line is going to get bullied. And I know that's going to shock some people because of how good they looked against Florida State, but I'm telling you, that's just how bad Florida State is this year. They're going to make teams look really good that 
they shouldn't make look good. Buffalo hosts UMass. UMass actually showed some stuff last week and competed in a game against Toledo, so I'm going to take UMass on the road to beat Buffalo. They also had a close game against Eastern Michigan. Buffalo's a team. Uh, Pete Lembo is their head coach. Uh, they lost their other head coach, linguist, to the Alabama staff this offseason, so still trying to get their feet under them. I think Buffalo's in for a rough transition year. Coastal Carolina should have no issues on the road against Temple. Temple is pretty bad this season. Stan Drayton firmly on the hot seat, likely going to be out after this year. Uh, Georgia Tech, VMI, this isn't going to be that signature FCS over power conference upset that I talk about. Same with Prairie View against Michigan State. Both games, I am just feel pretty secure in the identity of those teams. Michigan State getting the clutch win at Maryland. Georgia Tech coming off of a loss. They'll come back home. So nothing insane will happen there. Um, and here we've got a couple interesting ones. The Civil War, the game I will be at, Oregon at Oregon State. Now, before the season started, I would have taken Oregon minus... 20 in this game. I would have expected the Ducks to absolutely crush the Beebs. Uh, and it's because the Beebs roster significantly regressed from where it was last season. They're just in a completely different spot. Last season, they were legitimately like a top 15 team, according to every rating system, with how much talent was on the team. And you look at where everybody went in the portal, it all suggests and points towards that. So for Oregon State, the regression, I thought, man, the Ducks are going to squash them. The Ducks are one of the best teams in the country. But from what I've seen through two weeks, the Ducks have just struggled versus Boise State and Idaho at home in Autzen. And Oregon State has looked pretty dang good defensively, especially. The offense is still figuring it out. But I, I like Oregon State in this game. And they're at home, and they have the home fans backing them. And it's the first time they've played since Oregon went to the Big Ten. So it just feels like one of those games in college sports that will transcend all logic and reasoning. And it will just be a team going into a rowdy environment where the other team is mad and ready to win and something crazy happens. And I say that, there's a little bit of hope sprinkled in there, the little bit of delusion, but that's kind of what it takes to make a gutsy pick. So I'm taking the Beavs at home to get the win over the Ducks. We've got Tulane at Oklahoma, another great game. Oklahoma looked horrible against Houston last week. Tulane almost beat Kansas State. So it's a perfect storm for Tulane to come in here hoping for an upset. I'm still going to rock with the Sooners. I think they're going to figure some things out. I think that defense is good enough that they can severely constrict what Tulane is able to do. It's just going to be a matter of Jackson Arnold making some plays, then figuring out whatever was going on with their headset in that game and the, the mic in Jackson Arnold's ear getting the plays in. It was There was something weird against that Houston team. So I think Oklahoma will figure it out. Ohio at home against Morgan State. Tim Albin's squad, 1-1. One one. They've looked pretty good uh, in their game so far, and I think that they'll get a nice win at home against Morgan State. Shouldn't be anything too crazy. Notre Dame at Purdue is another one. That is super interesting. Notre Dame's offensive issues are not going to be resolved this week, especially with a Riley Leonard that is suffering a, a nagging injury, I think, in his throwing arm. There's some sort of a strained something, but he's still going to play. Maybe we'll see Steve Angeli in this game as well. But Purdue is literally the team that pulls off upsets, and they made the mistake of still ranking Notre Dame. So Purdue could absolutely pull off this upset. I'm still going to just rock with Notre Dame. I think they can just shut down Purdue with their elite defense, and I think offensively maybe we'll see a guy or two make more plays because it did feel like they had a lot of, of just poor execution against NIU that Maybe they'll be able to fix some of that. I'm not saying their offense will be world beaters. And like I said, there's things that will not be fixed this season ever for that Notre Dame offense. But they've got to be able to find more stuff. And I think they'll be able to against Purdue to get a bounce back victory. And we've seen Marcus Freeman do it before. It's still an issue that they lose those bad games in the first place. But we've seen them bounce back before. West Virginia at Pitt, the backyard brawl. People's West Virginia stock, I feel like a little down right now after that loss to Penn State. And the Pitt... Stock is up because of that comeback win at Cincinnati. I still think this just straight up is not a very good pit team. West Virginia is a team that definitely still has all their goals lined up in front of them, so I'm not selling my West Virginia stock yet. I know the home team has won the last couple of seasons in this one, but I do like West Virginia to get on the road and get that win. Uh, next one, an SEC game that is totally flying under the radar, Texas A&M at Florida. I thought they were going to start Lagway in this game, but it sounds like they're going to do Mertz, maybe a two-quarterback thing for Florida. At Texas A&M, Wegman's been struggling. They've got weird stuff going on. I'm going to rock with the Gators just because they're in the swamp. I think they can get this victory. Um, and and I, that's that's pretty much just what it boils down to, them being in the swamp. I thought that this A&M team was going to be a quicker turnaround. With a guy like Mike Elko, it's clear it's not going to be that. This year, they're not going to be a top 25 team. They're not going to be competing like that just based on how they've looked. Uh, Ball State at Miami. Give me Miami at home against Ball State. They're just really good. Look for Cam Ward to rack up some more stats. Stay healthy if you're Miami. Get ready for ACC play. Get a win over Ball State. Nevada travels to play Minnesota. 
tough spot for Minnesota. Nevada is a team that has tested some teams this year. They are ready to play. Uh, Jeff Chott has got this team, or Choate, I think is his name. I always mispronounce it. He's got this team playing really well. But Minnesota should win at home. But they've been susceptible to losses like this under P.J. Fleck. And losing that one in North Carolina earlier this year is tough. I'm not really high on P.J. Fleck and the Golden Gophers right now. Maybe they go out and prove me wrong further in the season. But this is one they absolutely have to have. If they lose this one, there's going to be some difficult conversations. We've got the Apple Cup. I'm going to justify another upset pick. It's a narrow upset pick. I like Washington State in this game. First off, this isn't a game at Washington. This is a game in Seattle at the Seahawks field. It's a neutral site game. And the Cougs have just looked so phenomenal offensively. They can actually hang their hat on stuff, defensively speaking. And it's just the same kind of thing. The vibe I'm reading of the Pac-2 getting spurned by the rest of the squad and them getting a chance at those teams, those quote-unquote, big brothers this year. And I just think the Cougs can find a way. John Mateer has been electric. Washington's gotten off to some slow starts against Weber State and against Eastern Michigan. So I just really think Wazoo can go and shock some people and get a win versus a team that was in the national title game last season. And some people probably feel like it's getting disrespected, but it's a team that lost so much talent from last season. App State at East Carolina. It's a great group of five game. My goodness, is this one exciting. East Carolina, they're looking pretty good. They beat Old Dominion last week. App State with the devastating loss to Clemson. They got squashed. And a lot of people were talking maybe upset bid there. Pretty interesting result. And so it is It is interesting. I've kind of gone back and forth, and I've flirted a lot with taking East Carolina at home. But I do think App State is going to bounce back uh, in the boneyard at East Carolina. Uh, we've got Troy at Iowa. Look for a low-scoring, ugly game as Iowa is specialized in. And I think they're going to beat Troy. But uh, shout-out to the My Cyclones for getting the job done. I picked them, took a lot of heat and a lot of flack for it, and they went out and won it anyways. Uh, UAB at Arkansas. UAB really terrible. It's going to be the second time Arkansas just gets basically a lifeless opponent at home and just is going to absolutely dust them. They showed some promising things against Oklahoma State and yet still found a way to lose that game. And it's just one of those things. Bad teams find a way to lose, and good teams find a way to win. Oklahoma State was the good team in that case. Uh, so I'm rocking with Arkansas uh, in this game against a bad, even worse team. But I'm not too optimistic about Arkansas going forward in SEC play. We've got Utah at Utah State, the Aggies, the home team. This one's pretty interesting because if Cam Rising is out, I'm not too confident in how that Utah offense looked with Isaac Wilson at the helm. And Utah State's been waiting a long time to play these youths. I'm still going to rock with Utah because I think that defense is still going to be able to shut down Utah State pretty effectively, and they'll find ways to score. But definitely a little bit of intrigue. UConn at Duke. UConn, I just don't think, has the guys to match what Duke has at home. Duke should advance to 3-0. A nice, impressive win for Duke over Northwestern. Shout-out to Manny Diaz off to a 2-0 start uh, in his time with Duke, which is pretty impressive. And he's a guy I think some people might be sleeping on a little bit. He didn't even really get fired for any real football related reasons for Miami. It was really just because Cristobal was ready and available to take that job. So I think Diaz could do something. He could be cooking something at Duke. They've got that game. They've got an FCS game, I think, after that. And then they've got a matchup versus, uh, or I think maybe they play Middle Tennessee State. And then they play North Carolina. So that'd be a big game. Both teams could be 4-0 when that matchup happens. Uh, FIU at FAU. Another one that makes me think a little bit. FIU got an impressive win, but I do think FAU is cooking cooking with some gas here. I, I trust this team, and I think that we're going to see Tom Herman's squad get a win. And then here we've got Clay Helton's Georgia Southern squad at home against South Carolina State. Should be a victory for those guys. Uh, their loss to Boise State earlier in the year where they nearly came out on top was an impressive loss. Uh, we've got UTEP on the road versus Liberty. UTEP, that was one of the ugliest and honestly most backbreaking losses last week of the season against Southern Utah. Not many people were talking about it. They lost in overtime at home in front of like something crazy, like 40 or 50,000 fans in the Sun Bowl. And uh, it's just embarrassing to start off a, a tenure like that. And Scotty Walden has brought a ton of energy and a ton of players to UTEP. And to see them flop like that in a game where they have a really tough schedule and they're going to need those wins is really disheartening to see. Uh, this one is terrifying. If I'm Virginia Tech, I am absolutely terrified. You've already lost to Vanderbilt. In, this, uh, off in the non-conference, which was one you could not afford to lose and you didn't want to lose. And now you have to go to play the team that beats Virginia Tech, and it's all they do, Old Dominion. I jokingly say it, but I'm not really joking. It's the best rivalry in the state of Virginia. Old Dominion's going to come out ready to play, but I just do think West Virginia Tech can, can get that win. Not West Virginia, but Virginia Tech. Um, and because I think they'll be a little bit more locked in after losing a game to Vanderbilt, that's pretty eye-opening, and I think they'll be ready. Colgate at Akron. I do think I'll take Akron at home. 
could be a close game. I just honestly don't know enough about Colgate. I know they're not a fantastic team. I have a, kind of a general perception of where FCS teams are in t- terms of the hierarchy. North Carolina should get the home win to get to 3-0. and oh. I was talking about their collision course with Duke. That's going to be in Week 5, though. Charlotte at home against Gardner-Webb should be a win for Biff Pogey, although I'm concerned about Biff Pogey. I'm concerned about his strategy that he's doing down there, and I'm concerned about whether or not it's going to work and bear fruit this season. Ole Miss at Wake Forest. Could Wake Forest strike early and, and make this thing a little interesting? Because Wake Forest lost to Virginia last week, people aren't talking about this game as much, but Wake Forest is still a well-coached team, a team that could find a way to make some noise. Ole Miss is a playoff contender, though. Should not lose, but could be a little interesting in the early going. Give me Western Michigan at home, and then give me Eastern Michigan at home against Jacksonville State. I really just think with Western Michigan, you're playing with Thune-Cookman, not a very good FCS team. Um, Lance Taylor squad at home feels like a surefire bet. And then we've got Eastern Michigan with Chris Creighton hosting Jacksonville State. And for Jacksonville State, they just have kind of disappointed me this year. They got blown out by home at home by uh, Coast Carolina. Uh, now they travel to play Eastern Michigan. And I think Eastern Michigan, they already had that impressive win. I thought it was impressive for a Mac school to go on the road against UMass and beat them. UMass is actually kind of underrated at home, I feel, and so is UConn, actually. Uh, but for Eastern Michigan to get that win, get back home, I think they can get a win here. Vanderbilt at Georgia State. Will the upset happen? This is a pretty terrifying game if I'm Vanderbilt because you feel like you've made it with a win against Virginia Tech, and then you look, oh, that's a pretty sketchy game at Georgia State this year. Uh, I think I'm just going to rock with Georgia State. Georgia State has a ton of transfers that they brought in, and uh, I think there's a chance maybe something could click, and maybe they could beat a Vanderbilt team that feels like they're rolling, maybe uh, getting a little too high on themselves. It could be a little bit of an unhinged pick here, but I'm going to rock with Georgia State. Like I said, I'm trying to show a little bit more respect to some of those group of five guys that I tend to overlook a little more, which is weird, but it, maybe it's just me giving too much confidence in the power conference teams because I am familiar with the group of five teams' games and where they fall in their respective conferences, but sometimes I feel like I underestimate their ability to pull some of these upsets. Uh, Middle Tennessee hosting Western Kentucky. I'm trusting that Tyson Helton Western Kentucky offense to go on the road, beat Derek Mason's squad at home. Middle Tennessee has looked a little shaky at times. Um, Hawaii at Sam Houston State. I've gone back and forth on this one. I'm ultimately going to rock with Sam Houston th- State. Good things just don't happen to Hawaii recently. Even though they were close against UCLA, even though they had a bye, Sam Houston State has looked pretty dang good this year. And they had that impressive road victory at Rice. I'm going to trust them at home. Hawaii's been a little inconsistent offensively, and I think that could end up hurting them. We've got Kennesaw State at San Jose State. Ken Niamatololo squad could get off to a 3-0 and start this year, and I think they will, and that is pretty impressive. So uh, watch out for them in, in Mountain West play. If they can win a few games they're not supposed to, we could be talking about a Ken Niamatololo San Jose State squad that's flirting with a conference championship game appearance, but uh, you didn't hear that from me. South Florida at Southern Miss. Southern Miss, they brought in the portal talent. They had the number one recruiting class in the Sun Belt this offseason, and I just do not think it's going to matter against a team like South Florida. It's a non-conference game, obviously, but South Florida and Alex Golish, they're cooking. And you saw them test Alabama. That team is good. They are really good, and they've got some tough games, and they're not going to overlook this one. I think they're going to get a nice win here. UTSA at Texas. The Longhorns should not have any issues versus Jeff Trailer's Roadrunners. The Roadrunners getting crushed by Texas State last week, and Texas should do the same. Auburn's nightmare against New Mexico schools should be over this week. However, they have been extremely bipolar under Hugh Freeze, so maybe that happens again, but it's a really young team. I think they'll be able to bounce back and get a win here. Air Force travels to play Baylor. Uh, Baylor is a team that got got beat by Utah pretty soundly. Their defense did show some things. Air Force really low returning production numbers. They lost to San Jose State last week. Baylor should be able to get a bounce back victory at home against a team that crushed them in a bowl game a couple of seasons ago and arguably was kind of the start of the downward spiral for Baylor because that was after a 6 and 6 season then you get crushed in the bowl game to go to 6 and 7 and now a really terrible year last year and this year off to a not great start. Colorado at Colorado State, I weirdly have a lot of confidence in Coach Prime's squad going on the road and getting this win. Um, I just think they'll be locked back in for this one, and Nebraska, I think, is really good this season. Colorado State already got squashed by Texas in this season. I know they've got some great skill players, but I, I do think Colorado will have a significant talent edge in this game. That will give them the edge, ultimately. Toledo at Mississippi State is another interesting one. Uh, Could Toledo pull off an upset here? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say Jeff Levy gets his first win over an FBS opponent as a head coach. Uh, Eastern Illinois at Northwestern, one of those ones that makes you think for a little bit. But Northwestern's a, a solid team. I think they'll get their second win of the season at home. 
Central Florida at TCU, one that's flying a little under the radar, a couple of 2-0 and Big 12 teams. Uh, I like TCU at home. I think KJ Jefferson's looked a little shaky, and I was pretty high on UCF at one point, but I kind of want them to prove it to me now. It's a show-me week, and TCU, I think, is a little underrated as well. So I'm comfortable taking TCU at home in this one, but both these teams could be sneaky Big 12 contenders, and this is a game that could age really well later in the season in terms of how both of those teams are looking. I think UCLA is set to be one of the worst power conference teams. I don't think that game against UCLA was a or against Hawaii was a fluke, uh, how it was really close. So I like Indiana. I like Indiana going on the road. Kurt Signetti squad is a team that other people have been getting pretty high on this offseason. I'm not quite as high as some of those other people thinking full-blown bowl game, but I think they can get a quality win here and progress towards a potential bowl game. Uh, Georgia at Kentucky. Give me Georgia. Kentucky just got squashed by South Carolina. What do you think Georgia's going to do? And it's still at home. Uh, Nebraska shouldn't have any issues. Their defense is too legit against Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa, a solid FCS school. Shout out to them. But Nebraska has, I think, risen above being concerned for a game like this under Matt Rule, which is good because it's not something that you could have said they have risen above in years past. Uh, We've got Kent State traveling on the road to play Tennessee, the Volunteers, should beat Kent State, a team that lost to St. Francis, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee won by 41 versus a top 25 opponent last week. So trust Nico, trust the balls. Don't get Nico hurt. Don't do anything dumb. Just get the win by 50 and get out of there. Uh, Rice at Houston is another one that we're seeing late into the slate here as we've got the last couple of games. A fun rivalry game. Houston is the home team. Rice has looked bad this year. Houston's looked bad this year. I'll just take the home team. They're both pretty bad this year as I kind of thought they would be. Bloomgren definitely on the hot seat. Fritz still building at Houston, so not any concerns in terms of hot seat talk for him. We've got Maryland at Virginia. This one, Virginia's off to a fun 2-0 start. They're a team that I had on my radar. They had a lot of returning production. They're a team that could do something. They beat Wake Forest on the road last week, but Maryland, I trust this system. I trust Loxley too much. I don't think this is their year or anything crazy like that. And I thought that was last year, honestly. And this year, obviously, the tough loss already to Michigan State. But I think they'll beat Virginia. BYU on the road versus Wyoming. I'm pretty tempted to pick Wyoming here. And I think I am. Wyoming's 0-2 on the season already. And some people will be scared because they lost to Idaho. And they already lost a home game as well. But at home against the BYU team, that at quarterback, Jake Retzlaff, I don't have a ton of faith in. BYU plays good defense. I think it'll be a low-scoring, weird game. And weird games in Laramie are going to benefit Wyoming every time. So I think they're going to get the big-time upset win over BYU, maybe start to bounce back and give themselves a chance to go bowling after a pretty disastrous start to the season. Uh, New Mexico State at Fresno State. Uh, Fresno State, I think, gets the home victory here. This New Mexico State team, not as good as they were last year. They did have a pretty inspired performance versus Liberty. I could be totally overlooking them. They could come out and really shock Fresno State here. But I think Fresno State's a pretty good team, at home especially. And then finally, San Diego State at Cal. I don't think there'll be any Auburn hangover for the Golden Bears. Shout out to Fernando Mendoza, known follower of the channel and known supporter of the channel. So I appreciate him, and I'm always going to rock with the Golden Bears, even though I didn't pick them against Auburn last week, which makes me look silly. I did say I wish they win, but I, I didn't bring myself to pick them. So this is all my picks for week three, as you can see spread out. It's the deepest week so far, I think. Not a ton of FCS fluff in here. A lot of matchups, uh, especially a lot of chances for the group of five to make some statement victory. So I'm super excited. I think it's going to be a really fun, fun week. But let me know down in the comments what you thought about my picks, which picks you agree with, which picks you disagree with. And go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Do all the good stuff if you enjoyed the video. Looking forward to a full slate of college football this weekend. It's going to be an absolute blast to watch. But I will see you guys later this week.